Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jess with So Many Creations. In this video, I'm going to share with you another fast, fun freebie. We're gonna be making these adorable little bitty baskets. How cute, I can't stop making them. I have a bunch of them and I have even more cut out. So for today's project, you're going to want something that is non-fraying. So I'm using cork for mine. You could absolutely use vinyl or craft hex, really anything you have that's not going to fray. These edges right here are not finished. This one, I've used some HTV, which is heat transfer vinyl. I like to add a little sparkle inside. It's really up to you how you'd like to do it. You can see in this one where I have all of my clips, I stitched my edges together. And in this one right here, I use some rivets. So you definitely have some options. You can make the entire project just on your machine. If you don't have an embroidery machine, that's okay. And if you want to use some really fun decorative stitches, this would be a great place to try that out as well. These are perfect little hostess gifts or teacher gifts. Any time of the year when we need a quick and easy project, this I think is gonna become one of your go-tos. So if you have a rivet press and you want to add some rivets, we're gonna go over that in today's video. You could also use Chicago screws if you don't have a press. And if you're not familiar, a Chicago screw basically looks like this, except the backside is a little screw. So after you punch a hole, you use a screwdriver instead of a rivet press. Definitely a different style, but it looks almost identical. You can do the entire thing on your sewing machine if you prefer, so you don't have to use any special tools. How awesome is that? So we're gonna go ahead and grab our supplies. Before we get started on our supplies, you're gonna head over to my website, which is linked right here. Right over there is where you're going to find this download. This is going to give you the shape of our project for today. You can print that out and cut it. It's also available as an SVG. If you have any type of cutting machine and you would like to use that to do your pieces, you can do that as well. In the next video, I'm going to go over all of the supplies that you're going to need, including the sizes of the pieces that you'll wanna cut, and then we're gonna get into this fast and fun project. All right, let's go. All right, let's go ahead and get into our supplies. They're pretty minimal for this project. And I think you're going to be blown away by how quickly this goes together. I would say the most tedious part is getting your pieces cut out. So if you head on over to the website, as I had mentioned before, you're going to find this PDF right here. You're gonna go ahead and download that. There is a one inch test square. If your project is a little bit smaller or a little larger than mine, no one's gonna know. As long as your inside and outside are the same size, pretty much the same for all bag making, but just so that you can check and so you know you don't have to do anything with that. That's just gonna be your test square. Now, if you are choosing to skip over doing rivets or Chicago screws, and you would like to just sew your edges together like I did here, go ahead and skip the holes. You'll see that there's six total holes, three on each side. Don't cut those out if you're going to not use them. You don't need to have extra holes in there. So you can just completely skip those, these ovals right here at the top and bottom, those are going to make your little handle. They're optional if you would like to skip that as well, it's totally up to you. So once you have this printed out, you're going to trace it or use the SVG file that is available to do your cutting. And you're gonna cut out two pieces, one for the inside and one for the outside. So for this one right here, I cut cork for the outside and HTV for the inside. For this one, I'll take some of my snacks out. I used two, I used a green and I used a print on the outside. It's what I'm gonna do for today as well. And for this one, I use the same one. If you are purchasing cork or vinyl or what have you for this, you're going to want a piece that is about eight inches by 20 inches. So on my website, if you're purchasing cork, I use the nine by 27. That's gonna give you enough for the two pieces or you get two nine by 12s like I have here, and that's going to give you enough for a different inside and outside, whatever you'd like to do. Your piece here should measure approximately seven and a half inches wide by 10 inches high. Once you have those cut out, you're basically ready to start sewing. So I did grab a few extra supplies here just to go over those. I have a lighter, I always keep this handy so that I can burn any edges of my cork in case I get any fraying. Cork itself does not fray, but sometimes you will get some little frays um, from the backing fabric. So I always keep a lighter around in case I need to use that. I also grabbed two rivets. I am going to be riveting my edges like I had shown you in this one as well as this one. You can sew them as well and we'll talk about that. 
So I have two eight by eight rivets that is eight millimeters across by eight millimeter high. So the post is eight millimeters and these are double cap rivets. If you wanna use a Chicago screw, you could do that as well. You'll need two of those approximately eight millimeters. I have my scissors. I always keep a couple pairs around. So for cutting out the shape, I would use my larger ones. And in case anything shifts, and you'll see that sometimes, even though you have two identical pieces, they don't go together the same. I have my little fine scissors right here, and I can use those to really get into those small nooks and crannies in case I need to do any trimming. I've grabbed some thread and needles for my machine. I am using my favorite bag making needle, which is a 9014 Microtex. I love this for any of my cork projects. I also have some thread options here. This is a 40 weight polyester, it's a variegated, and this is a 40 weight cotton. This one is Aurifil and this one is Isocord. This is technically an embroidery thread, but I like to use it for top stitching, I think it looks pretty. So I'm gonna decide at the machine which one I wanna use. And I would also recommend that you have a matching bobbin for whatever thread you're doing, or you pay close attention to your colors. When I look at these, I am fine with having orange for both. I wouldn't wanna have white in my bobbin and end up having a white thread showing right here. So we wanna be cautious of those. You are going to see the top stitching from the front as well as the back. Last but not least, I grabbed my G foot. This is my absolute favorite top stitching foot. This is the stitch, or excuse me, it's not the stitch in the ditch. This is the blind hem foot. The S stitch in the ditch foot works as well. So it has a little guide right here in the center. And if I move my needle over to the left and increase my stitch length, I'll have some beautiful top stitching. This entire unit, if you're skipping the embroidery or any kind of additional decorative stitches, all you're going to be doing is sewing around these edges right here about an eighth of an inch. Now, when it comes to the little handle opening, I've done it and then I've not done it. I kind of prefer not doing it because I can never get mine to look the way I want it to. If you are more precise and you are better at doing that stitching, you can absolutely do it. For me, I'm gonna skip it. So here's a couple of other optional things that you might wanna have nearby. I had mentioned when we looked at this one that I use heat transfer vinyl. So basically what I did is I cut one of my pieces out of the HTV and then I would have my outside piece. Before I do any sewing, I'm just gonna press this on. Press it on, take off the carrier sheet. When you're using HTV, it feels pretty thick because there is a plastic sheet that will be peeled off when you're done ironing. When it's finished, it's actually very flexible and you don't have any of the glitter coming off. It's pretty sturdy. So if you're using that, you'll wanna go ahead and fuse that down before you do any stitching. Since I'm using two pieces of cork, what I have found works really well is using 505 spray. This is a temporary um, spray. I use this sometimes with my cutting mat when I'm using my cutting machine. Um, I just find that it holds these pieces together a little bit better than clips. So I can very easily put them together and add some clips all the way around, but sometimes things still shift. So I like to use the 505. I spray it lightly on the back of one of them and stick it together and I think it works really nice. So I'm gonna show you how I do that in the next video. In order to prepare our pieces for sewing, you're going to take your inside and outside, whatever materials you've chosen to use, and you're gonna place them wrong sides together. Get everything lined up here and you can add some clips if you want. You can just go all the way around and clip your edges. But for me, I would really like to use this 505 spray. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray it onto the back of one of my pieces. I'm gonna spray this off camera because I don't want it all over my cutting mat. So I just gave that a light spray. I tried to make sure I got all the way around the edges since that is the most important part. Get a little thread there. So now I'm just gonna take my other piece and it doesn't matter which one you spray. I just grabbed the outside piece, but it does not make a difference. And you can see it's, it's still tacky and repositionable, so if it's not perfect, you can move it a little bit. But I try to get my center lined up, and then it's not so hard to get these ends here. Okay. So once I get that all lined up, kind of press that together, and now it's ready to go. If anything shifts while I'm sewing or if it happened to shift while I was cutting, once I get my top stitching done, then I will go back in and do a little bit of trimming. For now, I'm just gonna leave it. 
So all I'm gonna do is head over to my machine and I'm gonna do some eighth inch top stitching all the way around the outside of our shape. Again, if you want, you can stitch inside the handles if you wanna give that a little top stitching. I think it will look amazing. It just never comes out the way I want it to, so I tend to avoid that. Maybe today I'll give it a try. But whichever you wanna do, at least get the outside done. Once those are sewn together, we're pretty much ready to put this together. I am using my Janome Skyline S9. I'm going to use my G foot. So for me, I'm going to use stitch number four, which is going to move my needle to the left position. It's gonna be at 0.5. And I'm going to increase my top stitching to 3.5. I'm all top stitched. I did go ahead and stitch around the handles. They're not perfect. They don't look fantastic, but you know what? Nothing I do is perfect. I've already done it. I'm just gonna leave it. I did change out to my open toe foot, which made it a little bit easier because I had some more visibility, but you know, it is what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and just call it a day and leave that. So even though I glue basted, uh, my pieces might not have been stuck together perfectly. So I've noticed that kind of just right here, I've got a little bit of the orange edge sticking out and I'm just gonna go ahead and trim. So just give it a little trim with my scissors, no big deal. All right, get that out of there. And maybe, come on. All right, so I don't trim from the inside. I trim from the outside because once it's folded together, if anything is skewed a little bit on the orange side over here, no one's gonna notice it. So I just wanted to make sure that that looked good. So I'm happy. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to grab my rivets. Again, if you don't want to use rivets or don't have a rivet setting tool of uh, your choice, you can just go ahead and fold your edges and sew it on the machine. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna line up these holes just like this. We put the middle part inside and we do these right over the top. And if I was not using a rivet, I would go ahead and add a clip right here, take it to my machine and tack that down. Now it can be a little bit tricky because it's a small project. What I found worked the best for me is to go ahead and clip and then put it on my machine and kind of fold my pieces out of the way and get my foot under there and just take a few stitches. So that's how I did it. What I'm gonna to do today is my rivets. And you can use any rivet setting tool of your preference. I'm gonna be using my handheld press right here. So I'm gonna just take my post and I'm gonna put my post through all of these layers, just like that. Get those right through all those holes and then grab my cap, and the cap will snap on temporarily because we're gonna go ahead and set it. So it is on there, so it's not gonna stay on there forever until it's set, so I'm just going to use my press here, get those lined up, and give it a squeeze. One done, come back over here, and here's another way that you can do this if it's easier. Put your post in from the middle, take your piece, fold it over, and fold it over just like that add my cap and get this lined up and there we go it is completed it's ready to use it was that quick and just like that in under 15 minutes we have a cute little project perfect for gift giving, organizing the sewing room, or just for fun. You don't always have to have a purpose when you make your projects, right? You can just use them and make whatever you want. So I have this one full of clips. I'm gonna decide what I'm filling the rest of these with. This one has my snacks. So I'm just gonna set that one aside. Once I have these ready to go, they will be decorating the shelves in my sewing area. If you need to download the SVG or the PDF, you can find those again on my website, which I will link down here for you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. You can contact me right through the website. It was great hanging out with you today. I hope you enjoy this fun, fast project. And before I go, I just wanna give a quick shout out to my friend Beth for being the inspiration behind this project. Thank you so much, Beth. If you like videos like this, don't forget to hit subscribe, click the notification bell, and give it a thumbs up. Until next time.